Hey there, this is Daniel with Spotio, and on today's feature spotlight, we are going to be discussing Spotio's calendaring tool that allows you to schedule and complete activities through the app. On today's agenda, we're going to be discussing the settings of the Spotio calendaring tool, the different activity types that you can schedule, and then how you can schedule and complete those activities. And to wrap it all up, we're going to be discussing how you can report on those different metrics generated from those activities. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do today is discuss the settings for Spotio's calendaring tool. So you can access these by going into the settings gear here in the admin web panel. Um, we have an integration section that we're going to get into in just a second, but for starters, we're going to go into the settings panel and click on the calendar icon. These are going to be the admin calendar settings that you can adjust for your entire Spotio account. So you'll see here we have the ability to allow for double booking if you want your reps to be able to have multiple appointments booked for the same time frame. Um, we also have the ability to select any day of the week versus business days only, and then also a default reminder. So these are the reminders that will be sent out before any activities. And again, this is just the default, which you can adjust. The reps obviously will always have the ability to adjust those manually for any appointments that they create. So any changes made here in this section by the admin will affect the entire account. Um, and that's just basically where you can go to set up some initial settings um, in the admin panel. Next up, we're going to go into the profile settings section and we're going to select integrations. So this is where any user can go for um, their Spotio account to integrate a calendar. And we have options for both Google Calendar and then any other calendaring system as well. So you just come into this integrations tab here and you're able to select which calendar you want to integrate. You're also able to integrate calendars from the mobile app by selecting the icon in the top left corner to open up your settings. We also have an integrations tab inside of here where you basically have the same option to integrate your calendar. You'll select that checkbox and then have the same option to integrate either a Google calendar or another calendar type. So now that we've adjusted our settings and integrated our calendar, let's talk about the types of activities we're going to be able to schedule. You can actually customize these by going into the settings panel and then the activities and results section. And here you'll find both common activities and custom activities. The common activities are going to be the different basic appointments your reps might need to schedule. Things like visit, call, email, and appointment. You can schedule or adjust the time frame of these, the default time frame, by selecting the little pencil icon. And let's say maybe for your company, a visit actually takes an hour and a half as opposed to 30 minutes. You're able to adjust once again the default time frame as well as edit the order that these common activities appear in, so you can uh, structure them the way your team is going to use them most in the field. In addition to that, if you're on our business or pro plan, you'll also have the ability to add custom activities to different stages of your pipeline. So think of these as activities that will only appear when a lead is inside of that particular stage. So you'll notice here qualify is currently set to only appear inside of prospecting. I'm able to customize the time frame as well as the name on that. And then I'm also able to suspend any of these activities, meaning I no longer want them to show in that particular pipeline stage. In addition to that, if you want to add additional activities to any particular stage, you'll just select the add activity button. You can come in and give it a name and duration. So for this example, maybe in my signed agreement status, I want um, a referral meeting to be scheduled. And once I remember how to spell the word referral, um, I will then put that in as the title, make it a 30 minute meeting and add it. So now my reps are only able to schedule a referral meeting with a company that is in that signed agreement status. So super useful. And at the end of the day, these are gonna be all of the different options you're reps will have to put on their calendar when they start scheduling. So now let's talk a little bit about scheduling activities and appointments from the mobile. It all starts by selecting a lead from the map, in this case, Jason Kirkland, and then hitting the plus icon next to activities above the visit button. When you hit this plus icon, it's going to take you to the new activity screen where you'll be able to select from either a common activity or one of your custom activities for the particular pipeline stage that you're in. So since this is in an appointment scheduled stage, I had a custom activity for in-person appointment. I'm gonna select that one and then I'm gonna open up the date range. This will be where I can select the date that I want to schedule this appointment for. I'm then going to open up the time scroller and select the exact time. Let's go with 9.30. Um, and now you'll notice that I'm booking an appointment from 9.30 to 11.30 um, on July 29th. I'm then able to go into my calendar and actually review this so I can see like what's around that appointment um, and what other activities I have for that day. We also have the ability to make it an all-day appointment um, as well as set up if it needs to be a repeating appointment. 
So some companies like to check in on current customers or visit with specific leads on a reoccurring basis. So we have tons of options here inside of this repeat option. Um, to actually go in and select how many occurrences you want and how often and on what days you want an appointment to repeat on. In addition to that, you're also able to customize the reminder. So by default, it's gonna pull up whatever you have um, the default reminder set to for your account, but you are able to come in and adjust when you want to receive a reminder for this particular appointment that you are booking. And then in addition to reminders, you're also able to select a different assign to option. So um, this is actually the lead that this is assigned to. And you'll notice here, I can select any of my other leads if I wanna book this for somebody else. And then if I select the assign to button below that, this is where I can actually select another user on my account to assign this appointment to. So you'll notice here, I just switched it from Larry David to Cosmo Kramer. Um, it then will allow me to book this directly onto Kramer's calendar. Um, but I'm also able to jump around and basically select anybody else on my team as well as reference their availability to make sure I'm booking an appointment for somebody else at a date and time that they're available. So as an example of this, let's say I want to schedule an appointment for George Costanza um, after double checking that Newman wasn't available at that time. Um, I would then come back and select George as my option to book this for since he is showing as available. Um, and now I'm going to book this appointment for George. Um, you're also able to put in notes for these bookings. So I'll, I'll leave a note here. Hey, George, um, need you to take this appointment um, that I'm scheduling uh, and put that note in for George that he knows um, that I scheduled this appointment for him with Jason Kirkland for July 29th um, at 9.30 a.m. After I put in all of that information, I'm just gonna hit the save button and it's going to book that appointment to George's calendar as well as sync to his calendar if he has it integrated to either Google or another external calendaring tool. In addition to being able to create a new activity by tapping on the lead from the map view, you're also able to hit the plus icon at the bottom center of the screen and select new activity to manually create an activity through the same tool. Um, in order to do this, you will have to first select a lead to assign the activity to. So as you'll notice here, I pulled up all my leads, select Jason Kirkland, and rather than tapping that lead on the map, I've actually done it manually by using the plus icon. So now let's talk about how you can add activities to leads from the web. Well, it works very similarly to the mobile. You basically just tap into the lead. It'll open this little side panel where you can select the activity type, put in all of the same pieces of information and have all of the same options that you did through the mobile as well. Um, you'll notice here, you can also select the assign to, select the lead, add notes, pretty much the same setup, just clicking into it from the web. Um, in addition to being able to do that from the map, you're also able to select um, a lead from your pipeline. Pretty much anywhere you have access to a lead from the web, you'll be able to pull up the side panel that allows you to create a lead um, manually. And then also you have that plus icon in the top left if you wanna add an activity that way, as well as the new activity button directly inside of your calendar. And again, all of these methods will take you to the same new activity screen where you can either link it to a lead or search for a lead inside of your account. Um, as you can see here, I searched for Jason Kirkland, pulled him up, and was able to link this activity to that lead. Now let's talk a little bit about how you can complete these activities from the mobile in the field. So you'll notice here I've added three activities for myself, an in-person appointment, a call, and a regular appointment, and I'm now going to tap into one of those leads with an activity. Basically, it's as easy as you would think to check off an activity um, once you complete one, and you do so by clicking into the actual activity from any of your menus. So we have an overdue section where you can see previous activities that were not checked off. So like Elizabeth Clark here, looks like I had an appointment with her yesterday and did not mark it as completed. Um, I have a today section and as well as a calendar section that'll show all of my activities inside of a simple calendar view. What's really cool about this is you can jump between different days of the week. You're also able to select the filter icon inside of this calendar view to put other users uh, appointments and availability side by side with yours. So as an example, if I wanted to select Newman and Kramer inside of this calendar view, it's now going to show me everybody's appointments for any particular day of the week. And there you can see even color coded differently the appointments for both Kramer and Newman side by side with Larry David's appointments. So very easy stuff. And again, it gives you full visibility into the entire team or any users that you're filtering by. So let's say I'm logged in as Larry David and I need to complete my Jason Kirkland appointment. Um, I basically just tap into the lead and now I'm going to hit the checkbox next to this meeting with Jason. 
Um, so that was me actually hitting the lead itself. I'm now going to tap the checkbox right next to it. And I have now completed this meeting with Jason. So if I back out of this lead, um, it'll let me see that metric. But first, I'm going to log my visit to show that I actually went and completed the visit. And you'll even notice that as I'm logging a visit in association with that completed activity, it's going to save that inside of the notes. So think of it as I'm now checking off the item on my calendar to go meet with this particular lead. And now I'm going to log the actual visit as well as change the pipeline stage. So that same workflow as before. And now it's going to log all of that in my history. So I'm able to see that I attended that meeting with Jason, moved the lead into signed agreement, and also added in that visit result of contacted. After you've completed an appointment, it'll no longer show in the today section, but it'll still show on your calendar so that you can reference back to it and see exactly how many appointments you completed for a certain time period. So let's talk about how you can complete activities from the web. Very, very easy to do. All you're going to need is to come into either the home screen or the calendar section of the web and you'll notice this home menu actually allows you to select activities that you have coming up you can do cool things like add them to auto plays and, and manage different overdue tasks and things like that but the main section you'll want to use from the web is going to be our calendar view so this is very straightforward it's basically going to show you um, either a day week month um, or availability screen for your different appointments and you'll notice here I still have those same three activities on my calendar I can also add in additional reps to show their calendars side by side the same way I did from the mobile. So you notice here if I add in Newman and Kramer once again, um, he's actually under C for Cosmo, there he is. Um, I can add him in as well as Newman and I'm able to see both of their activities side by side with mine for a particular day. So it just makes it super easy to come into the calendar for any particular time period. You can scroll between it, see what appointments are on the team's calendars, um, hover over them and actually see who those appointments are booked with for any particular time frame. Uh, once again, we offer this in a day, week, and month view. So you'll notice if I jump over to the week view, I'm able to see at a little higher level um, who's booked at any particular time. So I have um, one appointment for one of my reps there, and then I have this longer appointment call with Cynthia for later in the day. Um, once again, I'm able to see that from a month view, and then the availability screen will actually show who's booked at any particular time. So this is very helpful if you want to pull up like two reps as we see here to schedule um, out an appointment for whoever is available at any particular time. And then I can also see my own availability inside of there as well. So it works pretty much the same as the mobile. You'll notice here for the completed Jason Kirkland activity, it actually has a little checkbox next to it. So that allows me to see which activities have been completed. And then if I mark this call with Rob as completed as well, I can actually update that here from the web. So if I'm like making a call from my office um, or through any other calling system, um, I'm then able to, from the web version, actually update that I called this lead and check off that appointment as completed. So now you'll notice when I check off this call with Rob, it's now going to show with that little checkbox next to it the same way um, that Jason's did there, um, just to show that I have completed that particular activity on my calendar. So again, makes it super easy to stay organized. You can see which activities you and the team have checked off, and then you're able to jump into those different views to see what activities have been completed for a particular time frame. So for this example, I'm noticing here that Elizabeth's activity um, was not completed, so I can go follow up with the rep or whoever it was assigned to, and then I'm also able to see these other two that I just checked off have been completed, and this one for this afternoon is yet to be marked off as completed. So now let's talk a little bit about the reporting for all of these activities. So this is something that both admins and individual reps can look at, and they're gonna primarily be inside of two main dashboards for activities and activity feed. You'll notice for the activity dashboard, I'm able to come in and look at some info for this report. And I'm also able to break it down here by type of activity. So this is showing all of the different activity types for my full team. I can filter this report by an individual rep or an individual territory or team. And it's going to give me that breakdown of the different types. This user section is going to show a side by side view of my different reps and their number of activities, as well as what percentage of the total team activities that rep is bringing in. And I'm also able to break this down by the different types of activity. So if I want to look at like calls versus appointments or anything like that. Another cool one we have is users over time. So this shows you the time of day that these activities were scheduled. Um, now I put all of these in at 7 a.m. while I was making this video. So obviously a little bit skewed, but this is a super useful tool, especially as you have your reps out in the field booking activities throughout the day. 
Um, and then finally, I didn't save any of my activities within any of my preset territories, but if you do wanna break down like which territory you're doing the best at um, in, you have those territory options as well. Last but not least, we have our activity feed. This is very straightforward. It's just gonna show you the different activity types as well as date and timestamps of which rep completed and scheduled those activities. So super useful to show you exactly how well the team is doing with different activity types out in the field. So that's all I have for you guys today. Once again, this has been the Spotio feature spotlight video for our calendaring tool. Please feel free to check out our YouTube channel for additional Spotio feature spotlight videos. And if you ever need any assistance with your Spotio account or Spotio calendar, definitely feel free to reach out to our support team or your account manager. Thanks guys.